Hello, my friend. This is Kensani. Could you please take me through this question? Hi guys, welcome back to the show. We'd like to send a very big shout out to our proud sponsor, which is Liberty. Liberty, without you, we'd really not be here. So thank you so much for sponsoring us. We are so grateful. Guys, I know that there are a lot of you guys who are asking how can they contact us and also be on the show. So I have some exciting news for you, which we've been telling you. On the app that I said you guys must download, there's a tutor function. The tutor function, guys, is where you guys can communicate with us. What you just need to do is send in your video questions because I don't want voice notes. We don't want any pictures. We just want you to take a video either of yourself saying what the question is or rather of yourself and then show the picture of the question so we can assist you and also we're having some fun so we can show you on the live TV and your friends can see you. Right now to also continue with the second segment let's go into our question which is from Ken San. Hello, my friend. This is Kensani. Could you please take me through this question? Now, guys you guys are seeing me and you're seeing what the people that are sending questions are doing. That's all you just need to do. Please, I'm emphasizing because you will then be saying we're not doing your questions. No, it's because we want learner video questions. So send in your video questions and we'll assist you. But for now, let's have a look at what Kensani wants us to assist her with. The question says, without using a calculator. Now, I know that a lot of you guys will be saying, how will they see that I used a calculator? Trust me, if you use a calculator, we will definitely do see that you used a calculator. However, the question says prove that. So what I want to find here is the half. So I have a few rules that I want you guys to be thinking about whenever you're looking at these. We call these identities, by the way. So when you're dealing with identities, one, you always need to try and choose the side that is more complex to, in terms of solving. At times, by the way, there will be a time where you try and choose the side that is more complex, but as you're solving it, you realize that there's nowhere to go. Then you'll need to go back and solve the other side and continue with it as well. Where you end up, you will see that you will be having same, the same thing on both sides. So that's one of the things you need to do. Also, try to always think about the square identities and also think about your grade 12 identities. That is your double angles and also your compound angles. And then everything else will just follow as you're thinking about those things and applying them accordingly, please. So let's have a look at this one and see what identities we need to really use here. Now, it says sine of x plus 64 degrees. Uh, multiplied by cos of x plus 379 degrees plus sine of x plus 19 degrees multiplied by uh, a cos of that. So what I have here is I have sine cos sine cos. So what that would mean is it is the same as me having something like a sine of a plus b, right? And I'm trying to see whether I can be able to try and take it back to what it was as it was this. So what I will then have here is I can try and make it to be sine of. However, if you look at what I have here, guys, by the way, before we continue, you look at this, this is 244 and this is 379. So what I will then try and do here is I, I need to try and change this and make it something else that will be relevant for me to then use this. So what I can have here is, I will then look at, if I say to this 360 minus 379, I will then have a 19, right? So that's what I have there. And then also, uh, so it means that 379 is the same as 360 plus 19. So what I'll have here is sine of x, uh, let me just use the same color for us to not get lost. So it will be sine of x plus 64 degrees. And then here I will have multiplied by cos of 360 degrees plus x plus, um, plus 19 degrees. 
Uh, let me remove this. And then this will be a plus. So now I already have a 19, so I don't need to get, do anything to this 19. I will say this is sine of um, x plus 19 degrees. Then lastly, I need to try and change this to be a 64. So what I will then have here is, I can then say this is the same as cos of, I will just write it down here so that people can see it will be 180 degrees plus x plus 64, right? So look at 180 plus 64 will be 244. So that's what I'm trying to do now. The concept here, guys, is this is a compound angle question. So compound angles, you need to always make sure that your brackets for sine and for cos is the same whenever you're dealing with the first part of it plus the second part of it. So you need to make sure that your two brackets, there's a common factor in the two. So one bracket must be the same as the other. This other bracket must also be the same as the other. Then you can group it together and make it one compound angle. So let's continue with it. Therefore, this will then be a sine of x plus 64 degrees uh, multiplied by cos of, uh, remember 360 plus they all in the first quadrant, so that means it is a positive, right? So that means it will be x plus 19 degrees. <clears throat> now this will be plus sine of x plus 19 degrees multiplied by cos 180 is in the third quadrant. In the third quadrant, I know that my cos is a negative, so this will be negative cos of x plus 64 degrees, right? And then this will make, this negative here will make the whole negative there to be, the whole plus to be a negative. So let me include brackets so that it doesn't seem like we have a lot of terms. So in, in total, this will be sine of x, plus 64 degrees multiplied by cos of x plus 19 degrees minus sine of x plus 19 degrees multiplied by cos of x plus 64 degrees. Then lastly, so this is already in the form that I was saying, that you're gonna bring it to the form of sine of a plus or minus B. So that's what I now have. So this will be the same as sine of x plus 64 degrees minus now. So this is my A, this one that I just wrote here. My B will then be um, x plus 19 degrees. Then this is equals to a sine of x minus x, 64 degrees, so plus 64 degrees minus 19 degrees. And then lastly, the x and the x is going to be zero, so 64 minus 19 will then give me, so here I'll have 64 minus 19, which will give me 45, right? So this will be sine of 45 degrees. And then remember, according to the special angles, 45 there and 45 here, I have this as a root of two, and then I have that as one and that as one. So as a result, that would mean this is equal. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so it's one over a square root of two. Now, let's have a look at what they wanted. So that's what they wanted. Therefore, this is equals to the right-hand side. Now, guys, that's what I have right now with the question that uh, Ken Sani sent to us. What you just need to do, guys, is always go back to the basics. Look at what it shows you and what it could be, and then change it to that. If you can, though, please don't violate any mathematical laws. If you cannot do anything, it means you are not thinking enough. And also, stop thinking hard. Just try to le uh, level down your thinking, especially with trigonometry, because everything is just up out there. And also, the information sheet on the question paper has all these rules that you can use without you cramming the rules. Right now I have a career video that we're going to and I'll be back with some more questions. My name is Liam Williams, I'm from Cape Town. I'm a captain on the Embraer Regional Jet Fleet for Airlink based in Cape Town. My inspiration for becoming a pilot was uh, seeing my uncle 
fly, used to fly micro lights and just going up in the air with him and really enjoying it. And I've always had a sense of adventure and I enjoy all the challenges that come along with flying, which I hadn't quite discovered yet uh, in the early days, but I started out and just began to enjoy the sense, uh, sense of adventure and the life challenges it brought me. With our company, we have three different versions, a 37, a 44, and a 50-seater jet. So it's a medium category aircraft, and we do regional flying around Southern Africa for, uh, as a commercial airline. So with Airlink, we have three bases in South Africa. We have Johannesburg, Cape Town, and Durban. Uh, I'm based in Cape Town, and from Cape Town, we do Cape Town to Vintuk in Namibia, Maun in Botswana, Victoria Falls in Zimbabwe. We do Skakuza in the Kruger Park and Kruger Mampumalanga International Airport and then all also do smaller regional routes, Kimberley, Uppington and George. The process to, to becoming a pilot would be to join a flight school. Once you join a flight school, you'll sign up and begin a schedule depending on your time availability and go through the process of flight training. You start out by doing your private pilot's license where you need to do practical experience of 45 hours where an instructor will take you and teach you from beginning to the end of that process. You'll also write uh, several exams uh, completing the theoretical aspect uh, of the private pilot's uh, license training. Once you've completed that, uh, you continue on towards your commercial pilot's license, which are, there's further sub-theoretical subjects to write. And further flight training, you need a total of 200 flying hours. My first flight as a qualified pilot was for uh, Skydive Cape Town, uh, taking skydivers up uh, <laughs> and uh, seeing them jump out the aircraft, which was quite interesting. And uh, my first job was uh, for a charter company based in Polokwane. And we used to fly in and out of Botswana mostly. Um, and I really enjoyed the freedom and uh, the experience of being free and soaring in the skies and showing people uh, the kinds of views you get and taking people to beautiful places. Maths and science is important uh, as a commercial pilot. It forms the basis of all the theory do and all the various uh, subjects, uh, the basic formula of lift uh, that you'll work through for an aircraft to actually fly. Uh, you work through that in your foundational phase of training. Um, through all your theoretical subjects, you do calculations, calculating the mass and balance of the aircraft, cal calculating the navigation. Um, and then from a day-to-day -day basis, uh, we're calculating baggage. Uh, we have certain limits in all aspects of the flight that the aircraft is capable of flying in. So we need to calculate the weights, uh, calculate how much fuel we need to get to our destination, making sure we can carry enough and that we don't fly an aircraft that's overweight in terms of passengers and the baggage. So there's constantly calculations for every takeoff. So trigonometry forms a part of aviation in many aspects. Uh, the major one would be our en route navigation. Uh, the wind blows from particular directions and we have a certain track to follow flying from uh, point A to point B. And we need to maintain the track and the wind drifts us off that track so we need to adjust our heading. And then we'll calculate the drift angle so that we fly the correct heading so that we stay on a particular track uh, to our destination. And not doing that would set us off course. Another very important aspect uh, using trigonometry which is our final approach uh, path angle. Uh, generally we have a three degree slope that we fly down which brings us a, at a, a suitable speed and rate of descent down to touch down onto the runway um, and that's calculated at a specific uh, from a specific height at a certain distance all the way down to touch down so it's very important we stay on that path. Getting too low could be quite dangerous, uh, getting close to the ground when we're far away from the airfield and if we're too high, we might not be able to land and then we're gonna need to go around and attempt the approach again. So those uh, approach angles are very critical. The most exciting thing about my job is uh, the freedom of being in the sky. Um, the views you get, the, the quietness of being above the clouds. Uh, it might be quite a, a dark day downstairs underneath the rain, but uh, once you're above the clouds, you're in the sunshine, sure. There's times when you're in the weather and you need to negotiate it, but uh, just to feel that sense of freedom above the earth is a very thrilling sensation.